Right guys, well, <laughs> this is, I have to say, one of the stranger places I have ended up in my entire life here in the second collapse of civilization here in the Mayan Empire. <coughs> we are now in Buena Vista, Mexico, where my hotel room is four feet by six feet. I thought I had the smallest tiny house on Airbnb on the planet, but uh, I am in a 24 square foot hotel room in Buena Vista, Mexico. So guys, anyway, it's probably because I've had, uh, I don't know how many margaritas I've had here on this lovely, it is a Friday night, February 24th, and uh, I know I'm supposed to be doing my ecological meltdown roundup rant, but I kind of touched on that last night, and I'm going to leave it at that, because uh, I have... <laughs> I have really been trying to keep my mouth shut. Okay, guys, and you, and you need to be a little bit proud of me for not mentioning the words bird flu on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, anyway, but I just can't help it. I just can't help it. Uh, I cannot believe that this planet is thinking about going down this road again. Unbelievable. We're just going to check two articles from the Telegraph. One from yesterday and then today. Yesterday from the Telegraph, or is this today? Let me make sure I got the one. Yeah, this was yesterday. Bird flu kills schoolgirl and infects father. Uh, Eleven others under observation. Yes. Scientists testing a dozen people for avian influenza in Cambodia have said the father of an 11-year-old who died from the, the disease is infected. Reports of a possible human cluster of... H5N1 hmm, have caused unease, unease among scientists and health officials around the world. Yes. Okay, over the past two years, the lethal pathogen has devastated bird populations in unprecedented numbers and has more recently jumped into mammals, including mink, foxes, and sea lions. There are also signs it may be mutating, which could eventually enable bird flu to spread efficiently to humans. The World Health Organization hmm, said on Friday it was... Now, I don't know how they said this on Friday because this article was from Thursday. The World Health Organization said on Friday it was concerned the current outbreak may be spreading between people and ordered a new vaccine for humans to be made in response to the rapid spread of the virus. Uh, meanwhile, the UK Health Security Agency, the Health Security Agency, confirmed it is drawing up hypothetical COVID style modeling to see what might happen if the virus started to people. Yeah, so anyway, I was going to go on with that, but the Telegraph has updated. But I want to, let's see, I want to, before we head to the new article, 
Yes. Uh, the lethal pathogen has more recently jumped into mammals, including mink, foxes, and sea lions. Hold that thought for a moment. So now we're going to go to today's article from the Telegraph. Bird flu may now be spreading between humans, WHO fears. Mm, I have a bird. I have a I have a goose outside my door. Would you like to come in here and join us on this rant, Mr. Goose or Ms. Goose? I've been having this bird following me around here. Uh, okay. So this is today. Same newspaper. One day later. The World Health Organization is, quote, really concerned, close quote, the current bird flu outbreak may now be spreading between people for the first time in more than 25 years. The WHO has ordered a new bird flu vaccine to be made in response to the rapid spread of the strain of H5N1 avian influenza causing the current ah, 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 the current outbreak. Oh God. There's an I have a goose outside the door. Oh no. I have a goose outside my door. <laughs> oh shit, there's a goose outside my door. Get the hell out of here, you damn goose. Here I am sneezing. Oh no. Oh god, I have a goose outside my door. An 11-year-old girl died of bird flu in Cambodia this week, while her father is also infected, and 11 other human beings on planet Earth are under observation, with some showing symptoms. Experts are worried the large cluster might mean that the virus has now evolved to be able to be passed from one human to another. You don't need a goose outside your door. While captive and wild birds have been decimated worldwide by the current H5N1 strain, there has, okay, there has so far, this is the telegraph today, there has so far been no evidence that it can pass between mammals. What was it? The same newspaper said 24 hours ago. Huh. The lethal pathogen has more recently jumped into mammals. Same newspaper. There has so far been no evidence that bird flu can pass between mammals. Hmm. If, if the virus has been able to cross the species gap from birds to humans, then concern around bird flu and its potential to cause a pandemic Ah! will escalate. Mm. No sustained transmission of bird flu has ever occurred, but, but limited human-to-human -human transmission was reported in Hong Kong in 1997. All right. And then we have a photograph, the cut line of the photograph. 
says experts. This is a one line photo cut line saying experts. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people sitting around a table wearing masks with a bottle of hand sanitizer on the table and the explanation of the photo is experts. So whenever you hear the word experts talking about bird flu, I want you to think about this table of people. Seven people sitting around a table wearing masks with a bottle of hand sanitizer. Hmm. Dr. Sylvie Briand, who director of epidemic and pandemic preparedness and prevention said that the Cambodian outbreak, the Cambodian outbreak, which, you know, has killed one person, was causing more alarm than isolated cases that have popped up in the intervening two decades. Yes, the uh, Cambodian outbreak. Okay, let's see. We have supposedly one 11-year-old girl dead, her father sick, and 11 others. So 13 people. I don't know what the population of Cambodia is. All right. But the Cambodian outbreak hmm, is causing more alarm than isolated. This is not an isolated case. 11 people in a country. What is the population of Cambodia? Okay. We're trying to figure out the definition of isolated case. Okay, population of Cambodia. Right. 16.59 million. 16.59 million. So, is this a 16 million? 590,000 minus 11 is how many Cambodians apparently have not gotten bird flu in the outbreak. The outbreak. Let's see. I would look up the definition of outbreak. Anyway, let's listen to this woman, Dr. Sylvia Briand. World Health Organization Director of Epidemic and Pandemic Preparedness. <clears throat> okay, quote. When you have only one case, you imagine that it's because this case was exposed to animals, either alive or dead. So, for us, it means a zoonotic infection. But when you see that there are a number of potential cases surrounding the initial case, you always wonder, what has happened? Is it because maybe the initial case has transmitted the disease to other humans? And so we are really concerned about the potential human-to-human -human transmission coming from this initial spillover from animals. So now we have outbreak and spillover. This is currently the investigation that is that is ongoing in the con in the contact contacts of this girl in Cambodia. Hmm. We are first trying to see if those contacts have H5N1 infection, and that's why we are waiting for the laboratory confirmation of those cases. Secondly, once we have this confirmation, which she's automatically assuming they are going to get, 
we will try to understand if those people have been exposed to animals or if those people have been contaminated by the initial case, close quote. Yes. World Health Organization staff have now been deployed on the ground in Cambodia, and the results of these assessments will dictate the next steps. Dr. Richard Webby, director of the WHO Collaborating Center for Studies on the Ecology of Influenza in Animals, added that, quote, in response to the spread of H5N1 and a little bit of evolution, close quote, a new vaccine specifically against the currently dominant strain is now to be developed. Yes, quote, we are putting another H5 virus vaccine candidate into production, and that will start soon, he said. Yes. Dr. Webby added that the current stockpile of candidate virus vaccines, which could be deployed into full-fledged jab drives, full-fledged jab drives, should the animal infection be proven to have made the jump to spread among people, mm, is also being assessed a bit. Okay. Evidence suggests, evidence suggests that if the current strain behind the ongoing avian pandemic did jump to people, then the existing vaccine stockpile would work well against it, even if it may take six months to create the updated jab. Yes. Hmm. All right, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Dr. Wen King Zhang, WHO Global Influenza Program Chief, added that there were almost 20 current H5 vaccines licensed for pandemic use, and the new one would add to this armory. Yes. The WHO announcement comes after the UKHSA, is that the Health Services Authority, something like that, commissioned COVID-like modeling for bird flu should person-to-person -person transmission be found in the UK. Yes. The UK has activated a new technical group to create modeling for a potential human outbreak of bird flu. A new technical group to create modeling for a potential human outbreak of bird flu, which includes Professor Neil Ferguson, who was instrumental in the first COVID lockdown in 2020, and UKHSA Chief Medical Advisor Professor Susan Hopkins. Yes. Uh, a source close to the matter told the Telegraph, that a host of permutations were being drawn up, including a U-shaped severity curve. Hmm, a U-shaped 
severity curve. Where have we heard U-shaped severity curve akin to seasonal flu? A coat akin to seasonal flu, a COVID-like scenario where the oldest and most frail are most likely to die and the possibility that it is dangerous to all people, like the Spanish flu. Hmm. One of the scenarios being investigated by officials is if the virus is relatively mild, similar to COVID, with an infection fatality rate of 0.25%. Similar to COVID, an infection fatality rate of 0.25%. Which I think means that 99.75% of people, I'm not a virologist. I just have five years of college and journalism training. I think, I think an infection fatality rate of 0.25% similar to COVID means that 99.75%, anyway, the most severe, the most severe hypothesis is if the virus is as deadly in people as the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic, with a fatality rate of around, okay guys, what do you think? What was the fatality rate of the Spanish flu? It is 10 times the fatality rate. 10 times the fatality rate of COVID, meaning 2.5% two point five percent which I think means it's not fatal to ninety seven and a half percent anyway and a hospitalization rate of one in twenty some estimates of bird flu's fatality rate in humans are as high as 60%, 60%, there you go, but, but experts say this may be misleading and inflating, uh, and inflated by sampling bias, blah, 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 yes, the modeling, the modeling marks an escalation in preparedness by health authorities in the countries as the country's worst ever bird flu outbreak continues to ravage poultry farmers and wild bird colonies alike. And, uh... I know this fellow, uh, this fellow, uh, Humpty Dumpty, this was his comment to the story, take it away, Humpty Dumpty, hmm, where have we heard this story before? Sounds like deja vu from February 2020, all over again. I am off to Walmart to stock up on toilet paper.
I cannot believe they're pulling out the bird flu. Oh, God. Get out there, stock up on toilet paper and hand sanitizer like the experts in that photo while well, you still can. Maybe when I sober up tomorrow, I will delete this video. <sighs> oh, Jesus. I'm going to bed now. Bye, guys.